Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Tuesday Night Talk. I'm really excited to be your speaker today. I love this topic. Um, it's an unusual topic, vitamin D for the soul. And my name is Elizabeth, Elizabeth Padilla. I'm a resident teacher here at the Anabuti Meditation and Retreat Center. And this event is being hosted by the Brahma Kumaris. So again, welcome everyone. Good to see you all here. I'd love to see you, so please feel free to turn on your camera. It's a, a it, I will be the only one uh, seen, really. <laughs> so, goodness, vitamin D for the soul. What do you think that means? Uh, Manisha, Juan, Roberly. What do you think that means? Vitamin D for the soul. So we know on a physical level, vitamin D is a nutrient that helps boost our immune system. It also helps our, uh, helps our calcium be absorbed. Oh, you can't unmute, so I will help you. There you go. So Manisha, sorry. Oh, Shanti, sister, that's all right. We couldn't uh, be unmute. So yes. to me, the understanding is that when I'm sitting in meditation, Baba is the son of light. So I am, uh, you know, getting that whole energy from Baba and the soul gets re, uh, you know, ignited in that pure fire of Baba's love and light. So that's my take on it. And my locking daughter is here. She also wants to give her little sentence. Oh, wonderful. Light, son of light, Baba. <laughs> Hello, Om Shanti. Hello, Om Shanti. Welcome. So, thank you. So, Baba is the Suraj, which means in English, the sun of light. And he's he's very, very powerful. And, and he's the vitamin D to me. <laughs> to the soul. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> vitamin D for you. That's great. Yeah, it's interesting. But then wait a minute, we can't see God. So Baba is a lovely endearment for God. So with these physical eyes, we are a little limited in perceiving that light, the subtle light. Um, but I also like the point, pun on vitamin D as it, you know, we absorb light from the sun, that that's the best way to get vitamin D and that it is a D light. And so to pick up that subtle light, that subtle resonance, um, if we are uh, happy, if our mode or mood is at a higher uh, frequency or vibrational level, then we're more receptive to this subtle yet very powerful light. So let's look at this. How can we absorb more of this vitamin D? And, um, and it's interesting. Um, I, I'm going to approach it, approach it first on, a, on uh, you know, on the givens that we observe with our senses, with our eyes, with our ears with our touch, um, also with what information science can give us and understanding the, um, the beauty of light and also the contrast of darkness. So if we uh, think about it, we're actually taking a journey inward to be sensitive to this divine presence, to this divine light. But first, let's look at our own experience, or I could say in experience, how we see things from the inside out. So if we're not familiar 
I mean, most of us here are meditators. Um, but if we're not familiar with that inner world, um, that voice within, and just simply being aware of that dialogue that goes on in my head, in my mind, um, that conversation that I have with myself. So what is the quality? What is the vibrations that that type of patter or conversation with the self is? Am I hard on myself? Am I a good friend to myself? Am I kind in my thoughts to others? Uh, am I um, resourceful in the sense limited in um, expanding on thoughts, meaning that I don't go on and on about um, maybe the past or a mistake that I made and I would be hard on myself. So that would that would bring more of that darkness or the inability to be able to be sensitive to a lighter disposition or lighter frequency. So if my dis disposition is heavy or dark, it's hard to see. It's hard to experience that divine presence. So we want to be able, I'm going to share with you, I prepared a little PowerPoint for you all. And so I'm going to share. And, um, oops, okay. So um, I, vitamin D for the soul. And here we have the contrast. You see the sun and how it gives light. And then we also understand the dark. Now, the sun is what gives us that, that source. And in a spiritual context, we want to um, say that the supreme being or the divine presence or that reference for me um, that is of peace, of total love, of total pure divinity, uh, goodness. And for most of us, we might call this God or the Supreme Being. And this light gives light. It's a resource. And in the night, we may have the moon and stars and the moon reflects the light, yet it's not the source of light. So we may meet people that are very impressive and they uh, dance in the light. <laughs> they have a connection and they can be guides to the light, but then they are not the source. They are not the direct connection to that sunlight, to that light of the Supreme Being. So I want to have my own connection and to be sensitive to that. And we do have it. We already have it. But is it constant? Am I able to tap in and then sustain that experience? So let's look inward. How do we navigate? And it's like our thoughts and our feelings, the vibrations that are within us are like an inner constellation. And there's beauty there inside. And this inside, we go inward, inward to that still place and observe the stars, observe the beauty that's within, and to focus on those gems, those stars or lights within that inner night sky. It may be unknown. I haven't spent much time. I don't know if you've ever seen a full lit sky like this image 
here. Um, it is amazing. You can't believe how many stars are in the sky when you get away from all the light pollution of the city and perhaps find yourself in this beautiful place without the clouds and see the stars. So we need to take time for ourselves to be in that oasis out in the middle of the desert or perhaps uh, on an island where I'm away from all the lights of the city so I can, or the noise that's um, around me and find quiet time and to go within and to get to know that inner constellation. Um, in the old days, uh, we used to navigate by the stars. Uh, the sailors, they did have, um, you know, compasses, but to be out in the ocean, you know, you need to be able to navigate. So they would have a North Star or, or the um, people that would travel in the desert in the Middle East or in Africa, and you, you're traveling by camel and uh, how do you navigate? They would wait till the night. It would be too hot during the day. And they'd wait for the night sky um, to navigate with the stars. And they would have that north star to guide them. And so inside of us, there is that, that what I'm calling north star is that in to the divine, my personal connection. And it can be through one of our virtues, one of our qualities. It's usually that love link. Because where there's love, there's no fear. Where there's love, there is no fear. And when I'm in an unknown territory and I've lost that navigator, that navigation of that heart sense, that inner heart sense, that intuition, then I can become afraid. It's an unknown territory. So to get to know oneself and the types of thoughts that I entertain and to be friends with myself and to begin to nourish and stay in the light. So let's look at now frequencies. Okay, now let's look at the outside world for a moment because this is our day to day and we're looking we're understanding vibrations here and so I'm just offering some of these uh, terms that give a value to a higher frequency and this frequency is very subtle and in ayurvedic terms they call it sato pradhan or sato energy it's very elevated subtle. It brings clarity. It's very pure, authentic. It's where I feel centered and calm. And as the sailors know, when there's calm uh, waters, there's easy sailing. Also, I can see to the bottom of this lake or water and also I can see the world around me in that sato vibration, that high frequency. So I can understand myself. I can also see the world as it is. And also I can tune in to that subtle frequency of that North Star of the Supreme Being. And then the Rajo energy is more vibrant. It's necessary. It helps us to be energized, to get things done. But it can also be turbulent and wild. And 
then in the tamo, it's a little more base and I can be stuck. It's good to be grounded. It's not to devalue these frequencies, but to understand them, right? To understand those inner voices within us that balance us so that we are not airy <laughs> and that I can't communicate with people, but that I remain clear and authentic and not pulled by gross vibrations, that I'm not influenced, right? That I, I remain calm and cool. So those are, that's one offering on Ayurvedic terms. I don't know if you've heard about um, the Schumann resonance. This is really worth just looking it up. Um, and, uh, Dr. Schumann was someone, I think it was in the early um, 1900s, and um, he began to experiment and understand that the earth and nature give off a certain frequency, and that there, there are three um, orders of frequency, and the most neutralizing or um, I guess it, that he uses that term neutral or fundamental um, vibration is the 7.83. And um, we human beings and nature vibrate it when we're in a normal, healthy state, we're vibrating at a 7.83 uh, hertz. And um, what he noticed was in the city, the frequency is a little more, is off. <laughs> and so he noticed something in his own mother and um, that his mother would not do well mentally. She would have um, psychotic experiences when she would be in the city, but when she was in nature, she would be more normal. And so that uh, made him, um, do more research or or the effect that hertz these this frequency hertz is a value of sound waves of vibra vibrational waves and um even it creates geometrical shapes um if you ever seen um images or or videos of uh, sand or salt on a metal diaphragm that is connected to a um, audio system measuring vibrations in hertz and they will turn it up and you can hear the sound because for us humans we can't really hear the 7.83 it's too subtle um so our our auditory physical auditory system is limited in picking up those subtle frequencies um, or detecting them we feel them, we experience them. So when we're in the city, it's a different vibration, isn't it? And when we go for walk, even in the park, or even when we listen to subtle music versus um, intense music, I don't want to label different types of music, but you know what type I mean, you know, the really, um, that is actually can be disturbing to that subtle normal fundamental resonance um and then another way um that we measure um frequencies and you know about this of brain waves and about the electroencephalograph that they connect to your your head and you'll see these all these little uh, it's like a little web cap with these little modules that will be um, strategically placed on your head to pick up brain frequencies. And they would test um, someone, you know, doing different activities. And when they were meditating, they would be in those higher frequencies. And so the delta waves uh it's almost as if um, it's a very receptive vibration in Delta. 
and our own Daddy Janki, and some of you may know this, she has um, transitioned now. She passed away. Um, and wow, just a few years ago. But they tested her with the EEG cap and they had her do act, uh, you know, activities. And she maintained that meditative delta, in, even in conversation. So they thought their machine was broken. And they asked her to come back at another time. And again, she maintained delta while engaging in activities. And if you ever met her, she's this petite woman or was this petite woman and very unassuming, but her, the vibrations that she would give were so pure and they weren't you know they wouldn't try to reel you in vibrations they were bestower vibrations really pure and though when you're in a delta i understand that also your innate quotient is heightened your iq so your bandwidth <laughs> I mean, they have this term in bandwidth in um, internet, but your physical or mental capacity is broadened. And so you can remember easily, you can, you know, you, you can access data. <laughs> and then you have the theta, which as you can see, is, again, they'll say meditative or your kind of half asleep and then you're relaxed alpha and then you're engaged beta and you can see these um diagrams well they'll show the 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 frequency um of each of these so these this is basically um how uh science has been able to um allow us to understand what we can't see or sense in the world around us. And uh, we want to be able to um, navigate through our feelings, navigate with our thoughts. They shouldn't run us off course. So, when we have an aim or a goal that we want to achieve, do we ever find ourselves feeling stuck? Do I, do I ever find myself um, undermining myself even? Where I will think, oh, negative thoughts that I can't do it. It's not possible. What was I thinking? I, I, aimed too high, my bar is too high. I'm not worthy enough, I'm not smart enough. I'm not beautiful enough, you know, however we measure um, and value um, ourselves, whether on a limited level or even on a spiritual level, that I'm not good enough. Each one of us has special gifts to offer to ourselves and to the world and to each other. And it's more than just believing, it's experiencing that beauty within to delight in ourselves to dance with ourselves, to be inspired comes from within. It's an inspiration. It's not an outspiration. But I become inspired, motivated. I have a sense of purpose. I have to, in order to let God in, to let the light in, I have to open myself. I have to open the windows, open the curtains, let the fresh air in, let the light in. And it's vulnerable 
I feel vulnerable. Um, but I have to learn how to trust myself and to get to know myself. So um, when we think of a house and you know, it's also a, a metaphor used for the psyche, um, we wanna open the windows and the doors to let the light in, it's very healthy. If, if I don't let the light in, what happens? It becomes um, humid or dingy or um, mold spores can grow. Um, mold spores are everywhere. They're all over the place. But they need an atmosphere that's conducive for them to grow. So if I think of black mold as negative mold or, you know, if I'm thinking dark and negative thoughts and I keep the windows closed, I don't let the light in, then it can be quite toxic, my thought patterns. And I have to be very careful with this because my own thinking, um, it's really, it attracts my vibrations and thought patterns will attract the very thing that I dread or fear or worry about. And we know this, a lot of us know this, but we don't, well, I'll say for myself, how much am I aware of those subtle thoughts that keep the curtains closed? So how I can tell is if I become irritable or anxious or um, fearful or worried, or if my thoughts keep repeating, or I want to prove myself, then I'm veering away from that inner light. I'm navigating away from that sensitivity to the sun. When I'm able to tune in to that divine light, it's when I see that beauty within the soul. When I experience my own beauty, my own goodness, then it's as if it attracts this higher frequency of the supreme being. And I just... It, I just need to meet the divine halfway. You know, I'm tuning into that subtler frequency and the supreme being will meet me there and lift the soul to that higher vibrational level and empower the soul. And in my experience, it, you will never be the same. But of course, the beauty of this is I need to make effort to sustain that connection with the light. So I don't want to block the light. I don't want to entertain um, negative thinking and also not to, um, if I have any resentment or or anger towards anyone, guess what? It will block the light. And, um, you know, if, if I resist or I run away, it will follow me, you know, right? Whatever I resist, it will nag at me. It will persist. Um, whatever I struggle with, um, so how do I handle that? How do I face those situations? And you've heard these sayings like what's in the way is the way. And I like this other lovely saying that whatever I want in the world, maybe I want respect, maybe I want love, maybe I want clarity. 
Maybe I even want um, divinity. Maybe I just want to be happy. And I, I look outside of myself for that experience. But whatever it is that I desire for, I need to become that. I need to experience, or again, experience the beauty and be loveful, joyful. And the best way to do that is to exercise. <laughs> so we have our vitamin D and we also have a good exercise. And that is to make amends, to not resist opportunity, to make friends, to forgive, to let go. I know if I'm spinning my wheels and I'm repeating these, this, like, what were they thinking? Don't they know what I'm going through? You know, when we're trying to justify or prove ourselves, it doesn't work, does it? It doesn't work. It, I just get deeper and deeper in these fixated cycles of negative thinking. But to get out of that wheel, I begin to see that I already have those things that I need, the quality, the quality and experience of that inner joy, that love, and to love others, to give. If I want abundance, to give. Open those curtains, open the doors, invite them in. Now, it, it, I want to be careful. Perhaps it's not safe to invite someone into your circle or you're ready to um, work with someone or, you know, but I can send vibrations and to forgive them, to love them, to send them good wishes and wish them well. So that's one way of closing the doors to shutting the light out is that resistance. And then also um, the anger. And again, anger is just a fear. Um, and um, I often thought it was ego, that it's arrogance, but it's actually a fear of loss, of, of losing maybe my prestige, of losing um, my happiness, losing... Um, a friend, losing a support, um, losing um, love, that experience of love. So this fear of also security and stability is a big one. Um, fear makes us close the doors, doesn't it? to uh, shut people out. And um, I remember uh, rooming with someone um, I didn't know very well, because when we go to our headquarters in India, we will have roommates. And um, I remember this one person became very disturbed because someone had moved their shampoo and she got really upset that it wasn't in the same place where she had put it in the bathroom on the windowsill. So, um, but then after some time, I realized that it was her fear of um, not having control of her environment. But it, of course it was on an external level. Um, and so then I began to understand that a anger is a symptom of, um, of a fear, the lack of love, the lack of light. So how do I eradicate fear? How do I get rid of fear? <clears throat> Open the windows. <laughs> I know it, it seems like, you know, wait a minute, I'm afraid. So I close the door. But to be willing to step outside, to be willing to get fresh air and let the light in. 
And then um, also one thing, sometimes on our journey, our spiritual journey, we will be, um, you know, opinionated. Um, and so it's arrogance, you know, where we perhaps think we're better than. And of course, that will give way to another experience, and that is to feel lesser than. So if we play this game of, um, of valuing myself against others, and um, I may not approve of the way they think or what they believe, and I'll make someone else the other and so if I advocate, how dare you be angry, and then I become angry, then I've become the very thing that I've gone against. And there's examples of this all around us. I, I have quite an advocate spine since a, a childhood even. <clears throat> if I didn't believe in something, I would speak out. And I remember one Thanksgiving, I... I um, I boycotted Thanksgiving because in those days when I was that age, China was very poor. And I found out that children didn't have enough food to eat in China. And it can still be the case in almost any country. There are children that are going hungry. And um, I, uh, it was really hard for me to feast when I knew that there were children in the world that didn't have food. And um, so I told my mother that I'm, I, it just, um, anyway, I got all upset and I said, no, I'm not going to have it. So she pulled me aside. We had guests and everything. And she says, you are going to ruin our Thanksgiving. <laughs> and the way she said it, it was in a loving way. So thank God she said it in such a way that made it clear to this little person, me, that it would have been more benefit to participate and to find another way, um, you know, to um, instead of advocate against, but to do something about. And um, I, I feel that if I want to protect the innocence in the world, those that are innocent, like the elderly or the children, and that's sort of a little touch, you know, touches a, a place inside me that I want to protect, um, you know, these vulnerable people in the world, then I need to protect my innocence and create that vibration to be an instrument of the light, to be in the light, to dance in the light, and to give light. Share the light. See the light in others. By seeing that light in others, it inspires them. And we call this soul consciousness, or to see that light behind the eyes to see the the presence of that spiritual presence of that person <clears throat> and it helps them it, it creates sort of a bridge for them to cross to be able to to um, experience their own spiritual presence they feel comfortable in your company when you see them in that way they feel trust they feel comfortable, they feel safe, they feel seen. Um, so we talked about being fearless and secure, and we also talked about forgiveness. This also opens the curtains and lets the light in. To not demonize the other, to... Um, to develop that self-love and to share that love, amazing things happen. When I give time to someone and really listen, that's love. When I respect someone 
and give that regard and in a sincere way even i don't even need to say anything then again that's like opening a door opening a window so letting the light in allows the soul i the dweller within this physical form you can say the house of the soul and then my eyes are the windows <laughs> my ears to see out to hear out to sense the world around me but i want to tune in to find that safe haven within me that stability and security within and not to shut off from the world not to be a recluse not to be a monastic that you know it maybe that has a, its place it's good to have time for myself but also to mentally with my thoughts and with my words and also with my actions to engage in a harmonious way with others and uh, let if I'm in the light and I'm giving light then if someone is negative or angry or upset if I'm in that mode of giving then it's not possible to let the darkness in or the negativity the lower frequency because I'm giving and if I'm also connected to that supreme light then i have a resource and that resource never deviates from itself never lessens that it's always perpetuating and the more i take from it the more it it um multiplies and grows and that relationship grows the more that i sustain that connection with the light so i am a light i am navigating with that inner constellation seeing the light within the beauty within and sharing that light opening up the 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 windows and curtains and letting the light in so i would like to invite you to a, a meditation now and it's a guided meditation we're going to go on a journey together to help us open the curtains open the doors and let the light in so find a nice comfortable place where you are and if you're doing anything else put it down <laughs> this time is for you so if you have a cell phone or you're sewing or eating or whatever doing the dishes let's put that down and find a nice comfortable place to sit and even if you're amongst other people in the room it's perfect fine will create such a lovely vibration together that um, it will create a nice atmosphere where you are sitting personally. So let's take a nice deep breath in. And in that light, in that divine light, I soak up that light and I I feel that compassion that self-compassion and love for the self with each breath I let go And I create a safe space I feel complete 
love and acceptance for the self. I'm aware of the sounds. I'm even aware of my own heartbeat. And I'm aware of the love within. And I totally accept myself as I am. And I accept where I am. And with my mind, I imagine myself in a beautiful garden. I can smell the fragrance of the flowers. Perhaps I hear birds. I can even imagine the smells of the earth. Perhaps I feel a cool breeze and the warmth of the sun on my back. As I walk through this beautiful garden, I sit on a chair or a bench that's there and I feel so peaceful, calm, safe. I relax, I let go, and I breathe. I can feel the presence of that divine being of love and kindness, like the light of the sun. I am not alone. I'm in good company. And I notice that there's a house a beautiful house. So I get up from the bench and I walk towards the house. And as I come up to the porch, there's a sign on the door and there's a word written, inscribed on that sign that's intended for me. What does that sign say? And the door is ajar, it's open. So I push the door on, oh, uh, in. And this house has many rooms. There's a beautiful living area with a fireplace. And I notice a hallway with many doors and they're closed.
And I walk down the hallway and I'm drawn to one of the doors. And I place my hand on the doorknob and I notice again on the door is another sign. A message, a word intended for me on the door of this room. And the first word that comes to mind, I take it in. And then I open the door to the room of my heart. And in this room, I haven't been for a long time. Perhaps I've even avoided this room. But now I'm ready to see what's in it, what's inside this room. And the room is dark. There's something still unresolved in this room of the heart. Perhaps it might be linked to the way of thinking or reacting to people or to myself some encounter or a particular situation. And I see something in the room. And it can be an object, but there's something that I can see that's visible in the room that represents this unresolved issue or feeling. And while in the room, I also feel the divine presence. Even though the room may feel dark or musty or even cold, I am in the light with this divine presence. I'm aware of this form in the room. It's just a silhouette. It's a shadow. It's not necessary to know what it is. I don't have to take it apart. But I'm aware that it's there. It's just something that I might be holding on to that I'm ready to let go. So move deeper into an observing mode and with love holding God's hand you're ready to turn on the lights you switch on the light and the room is huge There's natural beauty around you, perhaps even a stream and trees and meadows. And the dark image is dwarfed in this place. It's insignificant in comparison to the beauty that is in this room.
and you're aware, you're observing the beauty. Perhaps there's this brook or a stream of water flowing in this room. And you find peace. There's a feeling of stillness, wholeness, and I let go of the darkness, and I let in the love, the forgiveness, the merciful feelings. And then I leave the room. I walk the hallway. And I come back to the garden. And in the garden, there's another sign. And this sign has a word on it intended for me. What's the first word that comes to mind as you come back to the garden? And now I come back into the room where I'm sitting and I bring attention to my breath and the sounds. Yet I take with me that experience of peace. Om Shanti, welcome back. So how is that experience for you? I hope you were able to make peace with the dark <laughs> and bring in the light. <laughs> yes. You can unmute yourself too if you would like, um, if you want to share. I can um, pause the recording. So, One of the things that in this meditation, you know, understanding the little signposts along the way, and you, you've you got it now that the symbolism of the house is um, really about my own psyche. It's a common metaphor for um, consciousness or a sense of self and all the different rooms with stored experiences and the garden symbolizes my work you know and so whatever message was on the door when I entered the house could be an indicator and also the message to the door of the room that I opened and then when I return to the garden that can be a little indicator for me they're just ways of guiding myself. Um, poetry does it too. Uh, good poetry will um, help me navigate um, with my feelings, to help me distance and to be the observer. It's so important on a spiritual journey. And again, not to cut myself off. It's to be uh, health, in a healthy um, observer mode so I'm not easily triggered that I can still remain um, uh, receptive to the situation, to the needs of others and receptive to what my real needs are. Um, if I'm, I practice meditating, 
I, I am able to listen to what my needs, the underlying needs. I can see the gross needs and my shopping list or my, my um, aspiration list planning and all of that. But underneath, what does the soul need? I wonder, may I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Is there a book or a CD that takes you on journeys like this? Uh, meditative uh, episodes like this that that you can follow along and gee I don't know uh, if I find out Roberly I'll I'll let you know there probably is uh, yeah and we learn to develop these inner dialogues too with ourselves um, and in a way this was like an exercise you know a meditative exercise. Um, to to um, those sort of um, unconscious indicators when we're quiet and still, then they surface. It and, kind of opens the subconscious. You're right. But again, it's not to psychoanalyze. You know, meditation is really about dealing with what surfaces, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what the beauty of uh, meditation is it heals, right? And whatever's at the bottom of the lake, it will dissipate on its own. But sometimes things will bob up, you know, will come up from the surface because they need to have exposure. And it may even attract situations in life. And um once I get to know myself, once I have a practice of meditating, I will recognize uh, where these underlying issues are coming from. And even if I don't, the key for me is to never be dismayed. Whatever is surfacing, whatever is on my plate, whatever situation comes my way, it is exactly what I can handle. Cool. And the illusion is that you can't handle it. I can't do this. And the, this illusion or negative thought is what cuts me off from my power. My, my spiritual sense of self is really true power and uh, power, stability, um, strength, inner strength. Uh, to be able to change oneself, to be able to transform and um, to grow, um, to develop, to be skillful and um, to shine. <laughs> so a lot of these obstacles that come, they're coming so that they can be released. and. Um, it will all, you know, when you look back at the challenges you go through, it's always, you go, you can even laugh at them when you look back. You'll go, oh yeah, that was good. Uh, you know, if that didn't happen, I wouldn't be where I am today. But when we were going through it, it could, it felt pretty, uh, you know, intimidating the situation. I, I, I would, I, I, most people agree with me on that. Um, so those obstacles can be doors to open. Yes, exactly. And rooms to enter. Yeah, but not to get stuck in rooms. And so that's why I was sort of saying it's not psychoanalysts. So we get stuck in these places. We just need to bring the light in and the mold will dissolve on its own. Or the, you know, like turning on the light gave perspective that each and every one of us is so abundant with beauty and skills and qualities and virtues, just abundant. And when we have these little accomplishments uh, in the world, you know, we keep thinking, oh, wow, that was a great adrenaline rush. That, I want more of that. But we don't realize it's just the surface. And so it touches a little bit of those qualities. I feel loved, or I feel peaceful or what it's limited. It's fleeting. But when I meditate, 
And when life situations happen and I come from this contemplative uh, perspective as the observer, as being receptive, and then proactive, I will have a positive return because then I'll have a better influence on the situation, even when the situation seems it's bigger than what I can handle, especially when it's bigger than I think I can handle. And then when you pass through it, you get such insights and that will actually um, help resolve many other little stones <laughs> along the way, tripping stones, I call them, you know, trip ups. And um, when you resolve one, it's like it resolve, resolves all the others. There's usually... We have one weakness, one aspect of darkness that we have to shed light on. And it's this, it keeps repeating, it keeps surfacing, and, but in a, with a different guise, uh, in a different situation. But it's usually this one little trigger that, I, that the soul will have. And um, we have abundant of light, abundant of beauty, like the inner constellation, you know, I love that um, metaphor that inside us is a whole universe, an inverse, you know. Um, really good to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, I love the spiritual journey, and, you know, I want, why make life difficult, you know, and the only thing in my way is my my the dark the dark it's my own self no one can make me do anything say anything or feel anything unless i let them so with that i will like to share This divine reference, this navigating um, you know, you see this boat in and the waters are calm, and you can even see the the stars by looking in the depths. it's it you just feel so connected when I call it this ping feeling where you just feel centered. You feel a sense of yourself, but you also feel the beauty of connecting with others and also the beauty of um, nature and of the divine. And I call this the little A plus B. You see here the this formula. Uh, you probably picked up that I like science and spirituality and um, I I my goal as a, a, a you know as a spiritual practitioner as experimenter um is i want what's real and it's unknown you know we're not used to going inside and and when i feel god's presence and i have that connection it's so beautiful so intimate so powerful but how do I know it's real? How do I know that by connecting with this presence that I can change my life and that it actually is influencing me and making me strong? And that's when I add C. So this is a bit, you know, it's in its own kind of world, but I need to test it, put it to the test. And to bring that relationship, that vibration of being in the light into the cycles of change. And I will, and change is all different colors, hues, values, dark, light, challenges, change, cycles of change and challenge. And so bringing that relationship within that cycle of change 
so that I begin to affect that cycle so that it, instead of a negative trend, I make it a positive, virtuous, uplifting, um, uh, I guess, um, metamorphosis, you know, where I can become the butterfly. And so D is the desired result, you or your destiny. And today it's vitamin D. <laughs> so divine reference and also destiny, that how it, it, it affects um, your destiny. Also D, vitamin D means your diet. And yes, we should, if we have on a physical level, please watch the sugar because it can create mood swings. And um, anything that we consume, it will affect the body. So I being sensitive to that, but also the type of vibrations um, that I entertain in thoughts, in feelings, um, and to, um, you know, just as uh, Roberly, you were saying, you know, how can I do more of these kinds of meditation? Well, great. Let's be creative. Create your own journey, your own commentary, um, you know, where you can uncover and discover, um, you know, the beauty within and also to realize how these little uh, blocks that get in the way, these dark forms, these um, hard places, how uh, they're really um, things that can be resolved. Some dissolve and some need light shed on them to be resolved. And time and God, those are the things. And so developing a daily diet of positive thoughts, create a commentary in your meditation that's going to fuel you and inspire you, and then to dance. You know, really, even physically, find a song you like. If, if and even when it's by yourself, to do something on your own, go for a walk by yourself, go on a vacation trip with yourself, um, or even if you go with someone, to have that quiet time and just uh, dance in delight. <laughs> so thank you, everyone.